Oh boy, Crash Bandicoot 4. I'm so excited. I really enjoyed Crash Bandicoot 3 Warped on the PS1. I'm sure this game is going to be amazing. What happened? Here we go, a controversial Crash game. Fans seem to either hate or love it. But I can tell you now, I'm probably gonna upset some people. Now I just wanna put this out there before we start the review. I do not think that Crash Bandicoot The Wrath of Cortex aka Crash 4 is a bad game, but it's not great. It's definitely a step down when it comes to Crash Bandicoot Warped. Now I was going to review the PS2 version, but unfortunately, Due to the whole Laserdisc back in the day, the whole uh, PlayStation 2 original, because this was a launch title for the PlayStation 2, you see, um, it actually has issues with PlayStation 2. I'm not so sure about uh, slim lines, but since mine is the original PlayStation 2, two copies of these actually crashed. Yeah, so I'm actually going to be doing something that I've never done before. I'm going to be playing the GameCube version because I know that, that won't have any problems. Hopefully. To start off, this is actually a port of the PS2 version via Eurocom, the same guys behind Crash Bash. However, the game is actually developed by Traveller's Tales. They would go on to do Crash to Insanity as well. So this is the first Crash game not done by Naughty Dog. All right, pretty cool looking title screen. Of course, we have the typical menu. Wait, what is this? So apparently the GameCube version got a little extra in the form of a mini game that you can access via a link cable with the Game Boy Advance. Being a Sony kid, I've never had a Nintendo handheld, at least not up until now, which would be a Nintendo 3DS, but I've never had a Game Boy or a Game Boy Advance or anything like that. So unfortunately, I will not be able to show you what this mini game is all about that comes with the GameCube version of this game. However, I'm sure it's on YouTube somewhere, so go check it out if you're interested. Alright, new game story time. Starting off as a slow transition into what looks like Cortex's base, with all the villains surrounding each other to come up with a plan to beat Crash. After they all want to give up, Entropy mentions that Cortex has been working on something. He reveals he created a super weapon, a bandicoot capable of immense strength that needs huge amounts of power to use. So Uku Uku wakes up the elementals, four ancient masks that caused all sorts of floods, earthquakes and storms centuries ago. Crash and Coco were playing when Akuwaku notices something is wrong and finds out what his brother has done. Akuwaku tells Crash and Coco to collect the crystals once again, but to seal back the four elementals. We arrive in the warp room with Cortex introducing the new enemy of the game, Crunch Bandicoot. A modified Bandicoot working for Cortex who will use the elemental powers to try and stop Crash and Coco for good. Now as a concept, I like the idea. It's a genetically modified Bandicoot, just like Crash but Cortex managed to control him. It's almost like this Crash versus what Crash was intended to be. However, the execution, not so good. The bosses aren't very interesting at all. Some don't even feel like proper bosses, but at least the final boss is decent, but we'll get to it. But yeah, that's it for the story. The goal is the same as Warped, collect five crystals in each area, beat the boss, and then eventually the final boss. Moving on to the gameplay, the controls are pretty good. I never had any issues with them really, my only gripe is the climbing. It's so slow in this game and I don't understand why. I want to get a move on. Crash has abilities from the previous games and even picks up the same ones from Warped. Well, almost all. They introduce a new power-up that's probably the most underwhelming power-up of them all. The sneak shoes. What do they do? Allow you to sneak on top of nitros. Yeah, don't ask me how that works, but no super belly flop? Or is there? One of the most random things in this game is finding the super belly flop move in a level. It's just there. But why? Honestly, you don't even need it. The regular slam is fine anyways. Alright, level time. Starting off from Warp Room 1, just like Warped, you are greeted before the level by the boss of that area, being Rocco the Earth Elemental. Fun fact about these masks are the voice actors. 
Rocco is voiced by Tom Wilson, who plays Biff in Back to the Future. What are you looking at, fuzzhead? Wawa is voiced by R. Lee Ermey. Don't talk back to me! I'll fix that attitude problem of yours! And my personal favourite, Pyro, voiced by Luke Skywalker himself, Mark Hamill. You can really hear the Joker in him. Is it safe to be wearing that fur? It looks flammable! Lolo is voiced by Jess Harnell, aka Wacko from Animaniacs. The Crash Bandicoot, eh? Oh, I've heard so much about you, and this is the hero I have to blow away? Ha! Seems like a bunch of hot air to me. Yeah, they got some diverse voice actors here. Oh yeah, this game actually has a cool loading screen. Wait, it's not here. So something I did not know is that the GameCube version has a static loading screen with nothing in it, whereas the PS2 version has a colourful animated background with Crash or Coco falling into the next level. It's pretty cool. Could the GameCube really not process such a loading screen? This? To this. Entering the first level and it's actually pretty good. It's a snow level, and you know how much I love my snow levels, and it's a great introductory level. The levels themselves do look pretty good for the generation. Some great visuals as well. My only gripe is that some of the dark stages are, well, too dark, so I literally can't see what I'm doing. Next stage is a flying stage, like warped once again. Already starting the vehicle levels, huh? Okay, simple enough, not hard or anything. And next we have... wait... It's Crash and a Hamster Ball. So we've had one platformer stage and two gimmicky stages back to back. Hmm, that doesn't bode well. At least the controls are good while in the ball, but I'd be lying if I said I like these and there's four of them. One of the things that people complained about in Ward was the amount of vehicle levels. So what does Rafa Cortex do? Shove even more than Warp did. If you didn't like it in Warped, you'll be hating it in this game. There is way too many of them. Give us more platforming stages. I thought I was playing Crash Bandicoot, not Super Monkey Ball. At least level 4 is a platform stage. Actually a medieval stage similar to, you guessed it, Crash Warped, but actually inside the castle. And even a dragon chases you, which is honestly pretty awesome. Then we cap it off with a factory slash base sort of level. I have to mention this, every time I see something new in this game, I am greeted yet again by a similar factory like level. Okay sure, there's like two in space, but the structures are very similar, a lot of the enemies are reused, where's the variety? Ah, I see, they like to end warp rooms with a base like level themed around each element. We've got the earth mask with a level more based around the mine shaft base, then we have an underwater base for the water mask, we have a more fire base factory for the fire mask, and then we have an airplane base for the wind mask. I like the idea, but there's just too many of these levels. What they should have done was make the warp rooms themed more around each mask. There are some levels that would go perfect if they were in another warp room. There are inklings of unique levels, but this game tries too hard to be like warped and doesn't even do a good job of it. The underwater stages are terrible, they feel bland and too open. You even have arguably the worst enemies in the game. These starfishes come out of nowhere most of the time due to them being either off screen or blindsided by the scenery. To make matters worse, in the GameCube version the sound they make is super quiet so you can't see or hear them coming. The PS2 version at least had a louder sound you could hear them when they were falling. That's something I mainly noticed in terms of differences when it comes to the GameCube version. The sound clearly wasn't handled very well at all. The one thing this game has going for it though, is a fully playable Coco. Yeah, this is the first time in the main game she is playable in platform stages. She functions the same, but she has a spin kick and a stomp instead. She also can't slide or use the abilities Crash gets from bosses, besides the running shoes. But hey, it's still cool to actually play as Coco and not be restricted to vehicle levels, and her levels tend to be pretty fun as well. Alright, boss time. First up is Rocco. It's the ball again, yay. You just roll around and hit the rocks, avoid crunch, and you win. Easy. And that's the bosses for you, pretty much. The second boss can slip you up a little, and the first boss gets a bit tricky at the last phase, but overall, especially the fourth boss, is not a joke. Especially when, once again, I have to compare it to Warp since this is literally a Warped clone. The bosses in that game had more character and were overall more fun and challenging. For a Super Bandicoot, it doesn't feel very super to me. 
But Jay, what happened to the badass bosses from Warped? <sighs> Mate, you really don't want to know. Let's just say they took an early retirement. This is just sad. Alright, final boss. We actually see Crunch's model for once, but you don't really fight him. You avoid the elemental powers and then bazooka him. Crunch will then knock Cortex down and you damage him. It's at least better than the previous bosses. Of course though, once we win, we've got to get the gems, just like... You know, I'm not even going to say it. So you know what that means. Relics! Yay! Which also means secret levels. Let's quickly go through these and get the rest of the gems. On to the secret levels! Nighttime is literally a night version of the gauntlet. Like I'm not kidding, the layout is the same. Some of the boxes are positioned the same. Really trying here, huh guys? Ghost Town's at least something different. You race in the minecart against Crunch. It isn't super hard once you find the best route. The challenge is actually getting all of the boxes and winning at the same time. Which I did, because I'm a boss. Level 28, we have not Rings of Power. It's honestly a lot easier. Level 29, we have the last ball stage. Hooray! Level 30, another snow level with Coco. Riding a snowboard through the level is neat. But the issue is getting all the boxes in one go. If you miss one, you have to reset. I must have lost about 20 plus lives till I memorized the location and made zero mistakes. Alright, let's fight Crunch one more time and get the true ending. Uka Uka gets angry at Cortex for failing and damages the ship they are on. Crunch regains his senses and isn't controlled by Cortex anymore so he joins Crash and Coco as they escape. Guess they are all living together now. Where's he gonna sleep? Meanwhile, Cortex is being chased by Uka Uka on an ice cap, which would then later on lead to twin sanity. So there we are folks, that is Crash Bandicoot the Wrath of Cortex aka Crash Bandicoot 4. It's definitely a step down when it comes to Crash 2 and Crash 3. I had really high hopes for this when I first got this game. It's just a real shame, there were some good ideas here, but the game is too unoriginal, too many gimmicky levels, and just very uninteresting bosses that aren't really even that hard. The goods, graphics is pretty good, decent for what it was, some nice visual effects, the music is decent, uh, and you get to play as Coco for the first time, and there are some okay levels when there are okay levels and you're not doing gimmicks. But overall, it's a very averagey type of game. Would I recommend the GameCube version? No. If you can get the PS2 version to work, then please get the PS2 version to work. If not, I think it is on Xbox, so if you have an Xbox you can try that, but the GameCube version port definitely had some more issues, uh, especially in the sound direction. The loading screen is whatever, like, it makes more sense that there was a loading screen in the PS2, and this one, it just sort of, it's no transition really, it's kind of weird, but uh, apart from that, I mean, it's still playable, but, yeah, I, I wouldn't recommend this version. But this would go on to continue with Crash Twin Sanity by Traveller's Tales. So it isn't the last game that they'll be working on. But from me, that's going to be it. I've been Jay, and thank you for watching.